Hi, Andre here from Novo Resume. Today I will teach you how to write a professional CV. Career advice by Novo Resume. As we all know, CV stands for Counterfeit Volkswagens. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> it stands for Curriculum Vitae. It's Latin for the course of your life. Research suggests that on average, recruiters look at CVs uh, for up to six seconds at most. Your entire life just gets glanced over. Seems harsh. So it's important to stand out and make your CV as captivating as possible. Lucky for you, I'll show you how. First, you might be wondering, what's the difference between a CV and a resume? It actually depends on where you're from. If you're from Europe, it's usually the same thing. Just like the ingredients in Spanish and Italian food, CVs and resumes can be used interchangeably. Now. If you're from the United States, it's a bit different. In the USA, a resume is a one-page summary of your work experience and background to the job you're applying to. Almost like a dating profile to potential employers, you're pointing out the best and the most relevant qualities of your work history. Meanwhile, a CV is a longer academic diary that could uh, span a few pages and include all your experience, publications and more. A comprehensive overview. Basically, you're expanding on those great qualities within the hypothetical dating profile. Now, there are several approaches to creating a CV. However, not all options are created equal. For example, CV Builder Template. Most people use the default Word template to create their CVs. Pop quiz. Do you see why that's a problem? Because most people are doing it. If you're trying to stand out from the crowd and land your dream job, you should avoid using those default templates because they are usually bland and lifeless. Remember, if you've got an average of six seconds of eyesight from the recruiter, Word is for writing essays in university and maybe love letters, not for creating CVs and resumes. Next, you might start looking for a better CV template online and uh, find some that costs around $20 or more. It's hard enough looking for a job and now you're even forking out money in the process of uh, hoping that this CV template is better than the ones you've already tried. Here's a spoiler, it's probably not any better. Lucky for you, we've come with a solution. Novo Resume CV Builder helps you build a one-page CV it comes with plenty of customization, so you can uh, personalize it and have it stand out from the crowd. Did I mention it's free? Most importantly, all of the CV templates are optimized with screening software that the HR manager is using to be able to read your CV for sure. This gives you the best chance at getting past the screening process. Now, there's no golden rule and not all CVs have the same sections. A lot depends on your experience and uh, where you're applying to though some parts do stay the same. Let's start with the must-haves for any CV. The first, contact information. This is for obvious reasons. There's no point in applying if the recruiter can't reach out to let you know that you got a job. CV summary or objective. This is an important attempt to make a great first impression. Work experience. Get ready to brag a little here. Skills. This is self-explanatory. What are you bringing to the table? Also, Try to keep this uh, work-related. As neat as it is that you can solve Ruby cubes while juggling, it may not help uh, sharing this fun fact. Education. Did you learn how to read? Did you get a diploma? Are you a human calculator? Those are the must-haves and the most important sections on any CV. Next are the optional sections to include in a CV. Certifications and awards. Again, try to keep this work-related. As impressive as, as it is to win a cup staking competition, it may not help you get a job. Languages. Habla Espanol. Do you speak, read, or write any other language? Bueno. Personal project. Here's a chance to show off your personality. Perhaps you're proud of running a marathon. Put it here. Volunteer experience. Have you rescued any sea turtles? Or did you plant any tree? Or an entire forest? Here's where you can shine. Again, these are optional sections and may not necessarily apply to every CV. Either way, we're going to cover all of this step by step. But before we do that, let's make sure you get the right CV layout. That's the first thing a job recruiter notices. Things like, is everything easy to find in one glance? Are all the colors, fonts, and heading consistent? Is all the information well organized? A well-presented CV with correct layout can make all the difference between getting through to the next steps of the hiring process. Here are some tips when it comes to getting the CV layout right. Keep it to one page in length. Only go for two pages or more if you can't summarize yourself in one page. Don't waste precious CV real estate on your life story. No one's going to read it. Clear and consistent section headings. Keep the colors, font size, headings consistent so that it's easy on the eyes. If it looks like a ransom note using magazine leather cutouts, it's going straight to the trash bin. White space. Make sure there are enough margin and space between texts so that the whole thing isn't cluttered and hard to read. Finally, save it as a PDF. 
Saving it as a Word doc might change up your CV formatting. Now that we've got the ground um, work covered and a template picked out, we are ready to begin with the first section. Your contact information is arguably the most important part of your CV. After all, even if uh, you get everything right, it's not going to matter if they can't contact you. The contact section of your CV should include first name, last name, phone number, make sure you include your country code if you're applying internationally, email address, keep it professional, Dragonslayer at 69 at email.com isn't a good look. Title, your professional title, either your desired job or the one you're applying for. Location, are you local, relocating, remote worker? Aside from the basic contact information, you also might want to consider putting your social media handles, as long as they're relevant. I'm sure your cats are very cute, but including their Instagram page may not help uh, with landing a job. Unless, of course, you're applying for a professional field involving animals. Hey, sweetie, it's okay. Snack for you. For every other social channel, consider how they reflect your work. For example, LinkedIn. Many people ask for a LinkedIn link when uh, applying for a job. As long as your LinkedIn profile is complete and optimized, as it should, feel free to include your LinkedIn URL in your CV. Twitter. In uh, very specific cases like marketing or journalism position, you could include your Twitter profile if you're active, have a decent amount of followers, and a writing style relevant to the position. Quora. Do you have a lot of authority on a specific topic in your field with a decent amount of followers? This can convince the HR manager that you are really the best expert they can hire. Stack Overflow and GitHub. Only for developers, coders and computer scientists. Medium. Only for freelance writers, bloggers and so on. Anything else? Got a relevant personal website or a blog or a YouTube channel? Use your discretion if it's relevant. Next, let's learn how we can stand out uh, within your CV summary or objective. Your CV summary or objective is your attempt at an elevator pitch with two, three sentences. Hopefully, the hiring manager isn't reading this while in an elevator. <laughs> Does it pass the six second test? First, make sure the language you use is clear and the HR manager doesn't have to read it a few times to understand it because they won't. They'll use it to practice shooting free throws into the trash bin. As a general rule, if you have more than two years of work experience, go for a CV summary. If not, go for a CV objective. With a CV summary, you should include your jobs and years of work experience, your relevant achievements and responsibilities, and what you're looking for as your goals. Here's what that may look like. If you want to uh, put a chair on top and uh, make your summary more memorable, make sure to mention how your previous experience will be beneficial to the current position you're applying for. While you're at it, you should also include information such as what can you do for them? How can you help? How will your previous experience help fit in the company's current environment? How can you help them grow while maintaining personal goals? Okay, but what about writing a CV objective? Just like your CV summary, your objective should be two, three sentences too. However, instead of describing your work experience, focus more on your motivation for applying for that specific job. Why do you want to work there? And don't just say because uh, it pays well. I can answer that for money. For example, if you're a recent gr college graduate without a lot of experience, you might want to use the CV objective instead of the summary. This will explain your motivation as well as uh, what you hope to gain from the position. Again, I recommend leaving out the part about just wanting to make a bunch of money. You're gonna show me the money. You're gonna show me the money. For an outstanding CV objective, you might want to include skills, education, and certificates relevant to the job title, types of responsibilities you can do successfully, how can you apply what you've learned so far, and um, here's what that might look like. Hardworking recent college graduate with a BA in graphic design from New York State University, seeking new opportunities with three years plus of practical experience with uh, Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, creating and designing UX and UI, looking to grow as a designer as well as perfect my art at Peer Studio. Overall, summarize the goal of your CV and communicate your motivation for getting into the field. Once again, leave out the part about trying to get rich. Now we've come to the part where you get to brag and uh, show off a little. Here's when you can really stand out from the crowd and showcase your work experience. This is the main section of your CV and where most HR recruiters jump to when uh, looking at your CV. They may even spend all the six seconds looking at this section and use it as a deciding factor of whether they hire you or not. No pressure, but don't worry, we've got you covered. To perfect your work experience section, the standard format is as follows. Job title slash position, company name, location, description, achievements and responsibilities, uh, and date employed. Seems simple, right? Well, not so fast. It can be fairly tricky to sum up your work experience in just a few bullet points. Most people just list their responsibilities next to the job position. 
Most people also use a basic Word CV template to create their CV, but you're not like most people, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Instead of coming across as an average professional, you want to present yourself as an A player, someone that shakes up the company in a good way. Make it clear how you took the company from point A to point B. Here's an example of how a well-written CV work experience looks like. As you can see, the work experience order is in reverse chronological order with the most recent job first. And in terms of activities, the details are backed up by numbers and percentages. Numbers typically stand out in a sea of words. Just like in Call of Duty, you want to showcase those impressive stats. It gives the hiring manager an idea of how you can benefit their company. If you want to assure them that you're uh, going to be right for the position, look for uh, what skills and responsibilities they are looking for in the job ad and tailor your CV accordingly. As with the glove, you want to show them you're the perfect fit. Now that you know what the well-written CV work experience section looks like, here's a bad work experience example. Increased customer support satisfaction closing rate. Generated new leads by cold calling and managed existing clients. Wrote social media content and increased engagement rate. Boring, right? With that said, in some fields, like uh, cashier in a supermarket, you don't have a lot of wiggle room in terms of achievements. In that case, you can simply stick to your daily responsibilities. Look for some skills and optional requirements that are listed in a job ad, and if they apply to you, feel free to include those specific keywords. This can also be the skills section on your CV. There are hard skills and soft skills. Hard skills are technical skills that can be measured and directly related to your tasks. Soft skills, meanwhile, are learned skills, such as your personal attributes, such as leadership, communication, etc. Usually, job qualifications already include what they are looking for in terms of skills. It's typically a mix of uh, hard skills and soft skills. And no, that does not make them medium skills. <laughs> All you'd have to do is tailor your CV to the qualification list. Finally, there's one other type of skill section that you can list within your CVs, and that is universal skills. This includes skills that are fit in the description of requirements of most career fields, such as MS Office, teamwork, analytical thinking, and more. No matter what job you're applying to, these skills uh, will typically come in handy at some point. Are you learning a lot from this video? I hope so, because that leads up to the education section of your CV. In this section, you can include program name, university name, and years attended, and other optional sports, such as GPA, honors, academic achievements, and more. Here are a few things to keep in mind while perfecting your education section. If you're uh, fresh from graduation with a sparkling new diploma, but don't have any work experience, mention your education first. If you have a university degree, don't mention your high school at all. It's pretty obvious you made it through high school. Definitely don't mention your middle school. Lastly, only mention your GPA if it's notable, preferably between uh, 3.5 and 4. Even though C's get uh, degrees, you might want to leave them off. That's pretty much the list of categories you're likely to find on every CV ever. It's what matters most and essentially determines whether you're the right fit for the job or not. Now, what about uh, those optional sections of your CV? They can help you show off a bit of your personality. Depending on the job and the person reviewing your CV, this might tip the scale in your favor. Here are some of uh, the optional sections that uh, might go on your CV. Certificates and awards. If these are relevant to the position, include them. Are you a Facebook Blueprint mar uh, Certified Marketeer? Feel free to use that. Has the President awarded you a medal? Why not? You can also include any relevant courses or online certifications that show you've taken the first steps and you're interested. Languages. Most companies uh, are international nowadays and being bilingual or trilingual is a great way to stand out and have a competitive advantage. Even if language skills aren't necessary to the position, they might come in handy at some point. When listing your languages, you can categorize them between native, fluent, proficient, intermediate, or basic. You should be honest here and don't lie on your language skills. The worst case is you get brought in to translate something you only know the basics. Comprende? Hobbies and interests. This is where you get to reveal a bit of your personality. What interests you? What makes you unique as an individual? Use your discretion here. Touching your nose with your tongue or wiggling your ears might not be the best way to showcase your individuality. To go the extra mile and show your general discipline and commitment, you can include personal achievements within your hobbies. If you've run a marathon, you can include that in your hobbies. And who knows, uh, you might have something in common with the HR manager as well. Personal projects. Side projects show your passion and dedication. 
They can help you make up for any lack of experience in a certain field or display your passion for the job. If you're going to include optional sections within your CV, make sure they are relevant and paint you in a positive light, either professionally or through your personality. And uh, there we have it. If you apply everything we've learned so far, you should have a well-rounded and professional CV. Congratulations! But before you send it off, make sure you prove it. The last thing you want is a spelling or grammar mistake, especially if you mention you have a good attention to detail. Now you're ready for the next steps in your job hunting process by writing a cover letter and acing the interview. Don't worry, I can help you with that too. There are also CV templates, examples and more tips available at novoresume.com. I've been Andre, thanks for watching and happy job hunting! Career Advice by Novo Resume.